Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another episode of the CXO Show. Um, like I said in my last episode, I've started enjoying this thing, uh, Surakshit, way too much. Uh, and I think I'm going to become a podcaster soon. And that's how much I'm enjoying this thing. Um, I tend to do this every every Friday. And this is the one thing in the week that I look forward to the most is my interesting conversations that I have with some of India's most successful um, professionals. Uh, the objective of the CXO show, like I mentioned at the start of every show, is to interview some of India's best professionals working in, uh, in you know, some of India's biggest companies, young startups, um, uh, because I feel that there hasn't been too much of a focus in the internet world around these professionals that actually run stuff uh, for the economy. Uh, and that's my objective of interviewing these interesting and successful people. Um, yes, and today I have Surakshit Khuller. How are you, Surakshit? I'm doing fine, Swapnil. Thanks for having me. Yes. The one thing that I noticed, Surakshit, this is the first time, of course, I'm interacting with you and our pre-interview chat was only five minutes because I like to keep it real during these conversations. But you have a pleasant smile on your face, which is extremely important for anybody in HR, don't you think? Of course, it's true for every one of us. We need more of it. Uh, and as yeah. you were saying that uh, you look forward to Friday, of course, uh, all the corporate crowd looks towards Friday for all the different reasons for me, <laughs> this podcast or this session, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, cool. Um, I'm going to quickly read out in a slightly more formal way. I'm going to read out your uh, introduction and then we'll just get to a, a nice conversation, right? So Surakshit is a senior director at PayU and Heads human resources for commercial operation and finance domains at the company. Surakshit, in his current role, works closely with the C-suite, including the CBO, C CFO, the CEO, and the CEO at PayU to design and align people's strategy, people strategy with the business strategy. Surakshit has an experience of more than 15 years in HR. Prior to PayU, he has worked in organizations like Unilever, Nestle, and Dabur, wherein he has held both HRBP and COE, which is Center of Excellence Portfolios across functions, be it manufacturing, sales, or corporate HR. Surakshit is an alumni of XLRI Jamshedpur and Delhi College of Engineering and has always been focused on creating impact rather than being focused on delivering HR practices only. In his personal time, Surakshit is an is a adrenaline junkie who enjoys trekking, mountain climbing, and is an avid F1 fan. Welcome to the show, Surakshit. You seem like you have a vast uh, array of interests in different things, um, uh, which which can is you, interesting. Ah. When you read it out like that, it sounds like a different person, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that 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 is so true, actually, right? When anybody reads out your introduction, it just feels kind of weird and feels like it's somebody else that they're talking about. Especially when I do that in the the singy songy manner that I'm doing it in, right? <laughs> it yes. really sounds like it's somebody else. You know, the first thing before this conversation, I was going through your LinkedIn profile, and the first thing that struck me is your first job was that was in engineering, uh, and then something seemed to have happened which pushed you into HR. So. Uh, just run us through your overall journey, starting with probably your educational background and your career so far, and especially this little shift that you had from engineering to HR. What happened? How did you move from, from uh, computers to human beings? Yeah, I think I've been asked this question many times before, and uh, every time I think about it, and it's, you know, first uh, 15 years ago, it doesn't amaze to, it doesn't fail to amaze me because uh when I look back at it, I at that point in time, of course, didn't realize, uh, you know, what was happening, like, like most of us uh, don't. But what really happened at that time, I was, of course, uh, did my civil engineering from Delhi College of Engineering. So it's not, not even computers, it was actually civil engineering, oh, you know, okay. down into the field, down into the construction sites and so on and so forth. So this yeah. was during my time, during my one of my training stints with mm -hmm. BMRC. So mm -hmm. the way we see Delhi Metro today, of course, 15 years back, it was not the same. Mm -hmm. So uh, I got an opportunity to do a you know field level uh, internship or a field level training with them, mm -hmm. and uh, my chief engineer uh, you know of course they try to rag uh, new students in their own way right so mm -hmm. he said first day first uh, you know uh, first meeting he gave me the blueprint of a barren land and he says mm -hmm. here is a JCB JCB operator 
here are five uh, workmen uh, go dig uh, you know construct 50 uh, pillars aur dekho 15 din mein how much of that settles down i said theek hai kar denge not much difficulty let's go and do that and when i did that the first hour and trust me when i say this sapnil it's it's true fact right first hour i realized ki boss this is not about engineering at all this is wow. not about my course this is not about anything it's all about man management because what wow. really happened Mm. they didn't tell me that there was a pipeline mm. a delhi jal board pipeline going through that mm. so the jcb dug it up and it all filled up with water mm. now me and those five workmen with mm. whatever tools we had had to mm. empty the water yeah. and the jcb operator went to 1 km away just there is one tree out there stood in the shade for the next 3 hours mm. when i went to the jcb operator these people took a break mm. and in the first day i just did five you know dug five holes and mm. then i realized shit what am i doing am i even yeah. not even capable of digging more than five holes a day yeah yeah that's when i realized it's all about man management um yeah what happened was i mean that realization then made me see people challenges at three across right yeah yeah you used to go to a hotel if you didn't find you know good service you realize that something is not there you know, somebody's not trained them well somebody's not paying mm. them so, so interesting so. so all yeah. those things collected you know and all those things collected to nudge me in the right direction i was fortunate to recognize those nudges mm. and that is when i said okay uh, engineering one year tried for the first time didn't get through in any of the competitive exams uh, the second time and then worked with tcs for a year uh, that is when my practical experience with hr started so up until mm. now it is all you know a little bit of observation a little bit of thinking with myself but in tcs uh, even back then the hr department was a little understaffed mm. so they wanted volunteers they wanted people to come on to committee safety committee engagement committee and so on and so forth mm. put up my hand for all of that mm. and then my trust with hr started so mm-hmm. worked for a year with tcs then tried again uh, this time around i did not give uh, any of the cat related mm. exams I just sat through the the hr courses um got through completed my uh, the mba program and that is when i started with my journey i was very very fortunate to get into unilever i believe mm. outside of my educational institutions that's my alma mater mm-hmm. all my you know initial ropes out there so mm. uh, i would never leave uh, i would never forget that period of time so that's how my journey in hr actually started it's so interesting right uh, uh, i'm going to jump straight into probably a couple of things people can really pull out from uh, your journey um i think a lot of young people surakshit um often take up courses or take up degrees uh, and at the time that they're making that particular decision uh, they have very very little exposure to the real world right and they end up yes. taking say an engineering or a law or a, you know or, or one of these things and often they quickly realize sometimes while they're doing the course and sometimes right outside doing that particular degree or course that that is not the thing for them but so many people are so scared uh, to make a move out of that particular domain because they're always affixed with this thought of saying yaar you know family kya bolegi ki abhi to engineering kiya and now i'm moving out to something else it seems like i'm not a stable person uh, and that is the reason why just so many people stick uh, to what they studied for years together although they've realized pretty early on that that is not their calling right so for any young person watching this thing i think it's very important to know if you um, if you realize very early on that you're interest your passion uh, your uh, liking is for something else please ensure that you take the bold decision of moving into that field right so rakshit what would you like to add as a living example of that so uh, i know of a lot of people who have done either of the two things right they've changed yeah. their domains and they haven't right so yeah. of course that's going to be the case but isko thoda sa main aapko i'll tell you in a little bit of a light hearted way yeah see young people these days are very very influential they mm. know how to influence uh, mm. you know people around them mm. use that to your advantage pehli cheez to nothing wrong with correcting your course in fact yeah you you would be seen as a smarter individual if you do that Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if yeah. your evidence, your understanding, your judgment convinces mm. you that you should change course, yeah, then go with that. Number one. Yeah. That's, what you said is very right. So, your families, friends, all these people play a role, right? Mm. But then learn to influence them back. 
and yeah. that is true that is needed at in any sphere right mm. uh, whichever sphere you work in it's not about hr at all it's about life in general you yeah. have to influence your way through life so yeah. learn to influence learn to use data learn to use emotions if needed learn to use a little bit of uh, you know uh, give and take what we say sam dam dan ve use everything mm-hmm. at but yeah. before any of that your conviction is most critical and then it's okay yeah. life will take you into different different situations so you can't be always on top of everything yeah so a yeah bit of, uh, you know acceptance is needed a little bit of influence is needed and yes mm. everybody finds their way yeah yeah it's interesting a couple of things came to mind um i did this quote is often attributed to jeff bezos uh, i'm sure it is he says you know you don't find your passions your passions find you right i yes. find that quote very interesting because uh, more often than not you don't really know why you're interested in a certain thing um i'm a surakshit a similar story as well right so i uh, did my mba in marketing uh, and my first job also was uh, in at l'oreal right as a, yes. as a marketer myself and then um from there i was very clear that i wanted to become an entrepreneur but i never knew that i'd become an entrepreneur in the area of learning and development right and yes. for me to have become an entrepreneur there i had to first become a facilitator and a trainer so i became a teacher uh, because of that which was very very unexpected and i keep telling people if anybody back in college had told me that i'm going to be teaching um and loving it that much i would have not really paid much heed to that right so so yes. difficult to understand what your uh, kind of passions or interests are earlier on so so absolutely no problem in changing course the way you realize it right yes. uh, the other actually thing that came to my mind based on what you said a lot of people like you mentioned are very clear about what they want to do they do that thing and then they stick to it and they're happy doing that and yes. great you know if you're one of those people to great right so there's no i guess one right or one wrong uh, I, i think both of us would agree that the only thing to really take out from this thing is if that you if you have the realization don't let you know what others will say yeah. uh, right really impact your decision of choosing a a new path yeah absolutely and i think uh, i'll just make a quick observation to what yeah. you said right for the yeah. people who also are clear about their path right mm. even for them things are not mm. going to remain the same right mm. it's not so well you have a certain degree of uh, commitment to what the yeah. path that you've chosen but yeah. there will be days uh, you know like myself there have been days where i think kaha ave was matlab ye kya kar rahe hain yeah. and it kind of reinforces if others come and tell you yeah you are in yeah. the wrong profession right then yeah you, doubt sets in yeah. but i think you have to balance that that thought yes there could be other avenues in future you yeah. have to be close to those but yes yeah. uh, you know your conviction is the starting point yeah 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 but yeah. you know the other thing from your from, from what you said unilever right it's a company that i have Uh, like admired for the longest time and especially since i was in l'oreal that was my first job unilever often was a uh, was was a company we always looked up to as a as a robust competitor to us um and uh, even when we started this show uh, surakshit the first person that we had on board was the uh, hr head of unilever and that's because of our respect for the institution um and it's so cool that so many for so many people unilever is the uh, uh employer of choice yes, yeah. largely because they know it's going to be a second college in some way right for them yes. because the learning and development uh, systems are so robust uh, um in this place that you're learning both through the formal structured way and also a lot of informal um on the job ways you're learning and it's so important which brings me to just the importance of when a company really has the right culture when the company really has the right learning and development frameworks how that makes them an employer of choice and how people don't forget that organization even years after being there absolutely couldn't agree more and uh, maybe yeah. i can add a few specific yeah. there yeah yeah the, um, it's in the dna of the organization uh, yeah. it's it's yes it, you know start with systems start with putting certain you know frameworks in place yeah. this is how we'll go to campus this is how we'll take young talent from mm. from the market this is how we'll groom them through the systems yeah. but then yeah. when they stay on for a while right they stay mm. on for decades mm. and generation after generation of tutors trainers mentors coaches go through and strengthen that system that is when it seeps into the dna so yeah. in that organization there are two things in their dna one is mm. the ability to coach 
relentlessly, consistently without dropping the ball. Year mm. after year, you know, you mm. will have management trainees or even not just management trainees, even people who are fresh into their career, maybe one oh, yeah. or two years, yeah. doesn't fail to, you know, give them the right uh, coaching, guidance, support. That's mm. one. Second is safety. Mm. I can maybe not for a, for this conversation, but maybe later sometime I'll tell I can tell you so many stories which uh, you know illustrate the importance of uh, how safety used to be uh, important. That amount. That yeah. Every single person down to the shop floor, to the field officer, to people in the office, to people in different parts of the organization, Amazing. it used to be the first way of life, not even the second way of life. Yeah. So putting on a seat belt, right? Uh, when you yeah. go and, and they believe that all of these people will take it back to their home. Yeah, do uh, it with their families. So when you didn't put on a seatbelt, you felt odd because yeah. there's something missing across your shoulder, right? Yeah, that yeah. was how it became a part of the DNA of the organization. Wow, it's so interesting that you're saying that, right? Because you know, very often there are question marks of the ability of business to bring about massive social change, right? Um, and there are question marks around it where business is often looked as big bad wolf in some way. Uh, and I, I always find it interesting, like, you know, business well done uh, can cause such huge uh, change, right, uh, for, you know, the employees of the company, for their families, yes. for the customers, and for all stakeholders. And and I think companies like Unilever are, are, are a beacon of hope, um, uh, I think, for a lot of corporates to, you know, go and look at them and learn so much from them. Because something as small as this seatbelt thing that you spoke about just shows of the immense care. Uh, that they have and the culture that they want to drive within the organization. So that's Absolutely. great. Yeah. Surakshi, tell me, what is it that you love as an HR head? What are the two or three things that you love about being an HR or a HR head? And what are the two or three things that you actually do not like uh, in terms of being an HR or at a at the HR head position? And take your time, take 30 seconds to think of what you want to say. Uh, but yeah, sure. Anyway, so I think, I think, uh, yeah, yeah. There are a few things that you obviously uh, think twice about, right? Uh, mm. And uh, things that you love uh, about your job. So let me start with some of the things I don't really enjoy, and not start with the role that right? that's about yeah. HR as a function. Yeah, and and there's no escaping this actually. See, I don't like the name HR. The first ah. thing I don't 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 really connect with the while I'm in the same domain, so guilty of yeah. uh, guilty as charged, but. Yeah. I don't like to call human resources, right? Uh, yeah. It's very transactional to me, right? Mm. Uh, here is a set of resources, do what you can with the, you know, and get the best out of them, right? Mm. At the core of it, true, right? Uh, mm. When you look at it dispassionately, you know, objectively, fine. That's mm. that's how businesses run. and There's no mm. change with that. But mm. having said that, it's not that transaction. It's way mm. more involved. It's way more nuanced than just saying human resources. So I mm. like to call it as human capital. I, mm. I, I go with that term a bit more because mm. I then believe that you will care for it the way you would mm. do for other, you know, forms of capital. Mm. Uh, you won't just see that as a resource. You won't see people as numbers or employee mm. groups. Mm. You would see them as individuals. And that's mm. my endeavor, to be very honest. Mm. Um, I prefer and I, I enjoy being out talking to people more on the mm. floor connecting mm. with them because I have uh, stakeholders distributed across various offices. Mm -hmm. uh, so so to me, connecting with them one-on-one -on -one or in a group or, uh, you know, not waiting for issues to crop up, right? It's important to preempt those. Mm. So that, that bit of connection really helps me going. And that's been from day one. And I'll take mm. it back to, again, Unilever, you might think, yeah. if you yeah. Deliver, <laughs> yeah. but my learnings are from there. So my first yeah. job in Unilever literally was in a factory. Right? Yeah, uh, and my factory manager was very senior, very tenured person, right? He gave me two tips on my day on the first mm. day, actually. Mm. And this factory was in, you know, in Sumerpur. I don't know if you've heard the place. It's no. in the heart of UP. Jo mm. movies mein chambal ka area imagine kiya, it was like yes, that. yes, yes, so, yes. So yeah. very remote place, and for a city boy to go over there, naturally it takes some settling down. And my mm. factory manager recognized that, right? Mm -hmm, so he mm -hmm. said there are two ways to do go about this, right? Mm. You can think of it as a two-year stint and you can count mm. down the days, right? Mm. Or you can think of it as a two-year stint and count up the days. Mm. Right? So this is what's going to lead up to number one. Mm. Mm. He said, Yeah, whenever you come to the factory, 
just put your bag in in your office and then don't come back to office for 2 hours just mm. roam around the factory mm-hmm. go to different places of the factory go to mm. the shop floor go to the mixer floor go to the contractor yard and go mm. at different points of time don't follow mm. a routine don't follow a pattern right mm. and then you will see the real side of this factory you can run mm. it from your office also when people mm. come to you mm. but then people will come to you with just their problems and mm. that's what you will have but if you go there if you go at different points in time you go to at, at the contractor yard at the time of loading or unloading mm. and then you mm. see how much effort these people put in mm. when you go to the shop floor you'll see who gels well with each other who doesn't gel well with each other these mm. are things that come handy at a later date and i could not believe it when it uh, that's how it happened whenever mm. ir happened a mm. lot of young hr people don't really you know want to go into that space right yeah it's, Oh, maybe it's a bit of grit and slime. That's fine. That's fine. Mm. But then the IR issues happen. If you know which teams work together, you can yeah. use them to you know break the discontent or mm. bring it to a pause. If mm. you know which teams don't gel together, right? You mm. would try to preempt or mitigate their conflicts happening. So yeah. that habit of putting the bag in the office and roaming around for two hours around the factory, that mm. is something that has stuck with me. So that's wow. the bit of my role that I enjoy most. I find it difficult if I just sit in a room for a, more than an hour, hour and a half. Long meetings mm. really uh, get me, you know, twitchy. Uh, mm. I do that, of course. As you grow senior, you have to uh, also um, be available for such discussions, for such agenda, where you have to put mm. your mind and into it. But that's that's the part I enjoy most about my role to go out to connect with people. and that is what has been the hallmark for my at least that's how i i i uh, go about doing my work for the last yeah. 50 whether it was so, field, whether mm. it was fact, that's how i went about it it's so interesting surakshit what you it what you're saying right um you know tom peters one of the management gurus he has this philosophy where he says management by walking around right uh, and I, and I, that term is always stuck with me management by walking around yes um because uh, uh, the more you actually like not figuratively but the more you yes. actually walk around and you know meet your people both as an hr a uh, professional hr head or a business leader for that matter right uh, i think the more you go and actually um, walk around interact with people understand their problems uh, you know have a good view on their actual work like you yes. said right uh, you know how long it takes it makes you uh, you know in a far it, it, it's a far better position that you are in to take decisions at a higher level which make more sense right um, and i'll just pull this back right just because i'm i'm loving this discussion you know aakhir you know dhanda kahan pe hota hai right if if i work at l'oreal where is the you know dhanda hota hai jab koi jaake aapka shampoo khareed leta hai right yes. and before that dhanda hota hai where that sales person of yours actually goes and sells that product to the distributor and in turn the distributor right. to the to the retail that's the point of business right uh, um, or you know that's that's where the rubber meets the road in some way on the other side where is where the rubber meets the road at the factory right where something is actually being made right yes. that is uh, where the rubber meets the road and if you don't place yourself in these two places as much as possible how are you going to get a real sense of what is happening in business right um yeah go on let me let me just uh, throw a light because uh, you know yeah. worked with unilever then worked with another uh, great organization which was nestle right and yeah. we talked of yeah. walk, you know management by walking around mm. of course they term it differently but they just do the same thing so there the term yeah. is gstd go see think do Oh, right. very nice. It would be simpler than this, right? Go see, think, do. Sometimes I'm childish, and we actually laugh yeah. at it. Ye kya yaar? Go yeah. see, think, do. मतलब ये तो regular routine है ना? Yeah. But they have something called as Nestle Continuous Excellence, and yeah. the hallmark of this is go see, think, do, which means yeah, the problems in business, you know, can get exaggerated if people just think of it from a distance, right? You go yeah. near to the problems, and when you put a focus onto it, the problem looks smaller. right yeah. and that is when people can focus on different parts of the problem so go yeah. see think do have a joint team go and see the hr person sees or the human capital person sees what they need to do out there the finance person sees what they need to do out there and then they bring back what they are supposed to do which is then mm. solvable 
right yeah i will not worry too much about what a marketing person does because i trust him to do his part or her part of the work yeah well. yeah, yeah. Like finance person. when you bring it back the problem starts to solve that's like the puzzle being put back together so yeah, yeah. same concept different application many large organizations have realized that the importance of simplification so yeah is another example of uh, you know management the, the same concept right yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, the, the same, same concept that uh, hey you know and you say, some of times you you just see why these great companies become great companies right and yes. why they have been around for so long and been so successful for so long right i think yes. a lot of these practices that you spoke about worded differently are uh, are are what is what is being done right um, uh, you know i was just thinking when you said that uh, you know one of the things that i i try to do as much as possible is meet at least six to eight of my customers every week right wow. um, so I, I genuinely try to do that and uh, you know truth be told Surakshit even meeting people online versus meeting people in person has so much of a difference Absolutely. and I've still not been able to kind of really figure out why it's so much of a difference right i know of course body language i know all those things right um nice. but you know we're meeting like this for the first time but I, you know i'm sure when we meet in person it's going to be like a you know an equation yeah. relationship the conversation is is even even better when you meet in person so i, I try to meet at least six customers in person right wow. um and another thing which has helped so much i've started this initiative which is you know as we get bigger as upgrad it's so easy for us to lose yes. touch with the, the ground realities of what is happening so uh, you know i meet individually for a half an hour slot um my people right wow. like everyone it's you know even the the fresher to the most senior person and in a continuous cycle right so every week I try to meet a certain amount of people and just chat with them and understand their reality of what's happening so so now it's come down to me I keep telling people I have only two jobs one is to meet the customer and one one is to talk to my customer and one is to talk to my people right yes. I think my job is more or less done but it's amazing what you shared in terms of um, the things that you enjoy uh, which are as rooted in reality as as possible. That's right. Because um, one of the things I can't do, you know, I, I just can't uh, do without is, uh, in my role at least, uh, mm. I, I, if I don't see the ability in myself to bring back the key insights of people, right? That's the reason why yeah. in the introduction also, you heard this sentence of aligning people's strategy with HR, uh, with yeah. the business yeah. strategy, right? Yeah very recently we were having a discussion with the leadership team on how do we ensure yeah. that every single person's role is interconnected mm. right it's very, yeah. it sounds very nice on paper right you can yeah yeah present this in a 15 slide presentation and put a lot of quotes around it but how do you do it on the ground now i'll give you an example where this mm. became too apparent and i realized that somewhere some things are being done right so that it works well two parts yeah. of the organization two in, led by two different individuals how do you yeah. actually bring them together and see the importance of each other's work? Because once yep. they do that, they already know the importance of their work, right? And they are passionate yeah. about it. That's the reason why they're there in yeah. that job. But how do you make them see the other side of the story? I think that is mm. where the function of the human capital or human resources function comes in, right? That's the mm. rule they play. How do you make mm. the other side see the importance of this one and vice versa? Because once that happens, the bond is mm. stronger. Other than just mm. saying, okay, you do your part, this person does their part, and then we will take the output of it and then go forward with it. It will somewhere mm. become a bit loose. It's like a joint which has not been fixed well. Yeah. So yeah, I think yeah. the joint and the bonding that the organization expects from the HR function or the human capital function to come together. And that's what I see mm. my job as. So interesting, right? Wow. Yeah you, yeah, you know, the first thing that came to my mind is you, you, there's a very nice quote that says there's there's one thing to know something, there's an there's another to live it, right? Yes. Like you said, very often different departments, they know what they're doing. They also know what the other department is doing, but they don't actually live it yes. um, in some way, right? So getting people to actually live it is is so important. Um, and I think the second thing that that HR, of course, needs to play a very, very important part in is teams coming together and working, right? You couldn't have said that better, uh, Surakshit, because however corny this sounds or however jaded this sounds, right? Uh, the reality of, uh, the reason why an organization exists is because that job can't be done by one person, 
right yes. so you need multiple people and in turn you need multiple teams right yes. um and because that job can't be done by one person you need multiple teams and then if those teams don't work well together you're not going to have right. the output um that you're looking for right and right. again i forgot i forgot who said this but this you know this thought that says the enemy more often than not is not outside the enemy is mm-hmm. inside right yes. um and this is not philosophical this is hardcore business because very often if we as an organization just execute amazingly well by coming together and doing it properly the product or you know what we'll put out is is far better than you know possibly our competitors but we yes. often look at our competitors as the uh, enemy and not what is really happening inside true that's true and then it manifests itself in many many different ways and that's the reason yeah. that's how organizations which last longer which grow mm. differentiate themselves from the organizations which find it a little difficult i think these core tenets will remain true you know no matter what the time what the age and what kind of industry we are in so yes that's what yeah. people have to realize yeah yeah interesting so i have a i have another question for you right what are some of the uh, key changes that you're seeing um in people post covid right and i want you of course to wear your hr head hat here while looking at how you seeing things pan out differently post covid versus pre covid and and are you seeing any difference at all uh, or are people making too much of a deal about this big change pre and post covid uh, what's your observation so certainly there are fairly clear tangible changes that have happened at the workplace mm-hmm. right so uh, mm-hmm. and, and and of course the event was large enough for us to uh, treat it as a milestone because some mm-hmm. of these are blips in nature but some of them are longer uh, long lasting and therefore change mm-hmm. things for the for the uh, for mm-hmm. more permanent way mm-hmm. first thing i notice is the employees are now very very vocal and mm. most of them in the right way uh, mm. but then they are now much more clear about what mm. they expect from their employer their teams their line managers and so on and so forth mm. in fact mm. now i see employees also to being clear about what they want for themselves right mm. so they very are also able to articulate very well that this is what we can do for the organization mm. this is what they want to do for the organization mm. earlier mm. i could see and i'm now talking a little about talent management etc people mm. used to enroll into uh, the talent management practices of the organization these mm. things are not known from the outside when you go and join mm. an organization you won't experience it in the first you know couple of weeks right uh, there are more uh, obvious factors there but the talent management practices learning and development opportunities growth mm. opportunities mm. these these are not apparent from outside when mm. you get into it you perforce enroll into it right you can't mm. create your own uh, path out there mm. and then people used to leave it to the organization to take it forward mm. that's where systems played a role now people are much more clear about how they want their careers to progress not mm. everybody is looking for a vertical growth right mm. so how do you give them alternate career frameworks we in mm. payu just and you know recently launched our career ladder framework right uh, and this is not restrictive in terms of vertical hierarchy alone it talks about alternate career paths career ladders and so on and so forth job mm-hmm. families sub job families even if you're in sales doesn't mean you'll become you know for using a generic term sales officer sales manager regional sales manager mm-hmm. it's not necessary you go that way you can always deviate into other things so employees have become much more clear about what they want from the organization from their teams from their line managers which is a good thing a lot of people in hr believe we are you know made things more difficult now employee can come and be more demanding but mm. i feel that it's that's actually good because now you know what you can mm. actually deliver or deliver no deliver yeah. right you have your constraints yeah. that's fine but now you know that this is yeah. what the organization can benefit from because that's what the employees are asking so that is one big change i see employees becoming more vocal organization becoming more clear about what can or cannot be done that's one second the business has become more complex there's no doubt mm. about that Mm-hmm. because of the distributed workplaces because of you know online versus offline hybrid and so on and so forth so business mm-hmm. challenges have only increased now i feel there's a bit of a uh, out of sync between what the business challenges are and sometimes what leaders still think mm-hmm. of the olden time so that's the second big mm-hmm. uh, concern that i see or, or a change that i see that leaders sometimes are still stuck in their previous ways of working 
where they would want the whole team sitting out in front of them you know taking them through a business review so called business mm. review which goes on and on and on right mm. um some leaders have made the change because now they are thinking more in terms of productivity and output rather than mm. the input parameters of how many man hours how many people what is my manning percentage of you know uh resources and so on and so forth so mm-hmm. some leaders have made that shift and those th- that's very clear for the organization to see these are the leaders mm-hmm. who are now being groomed for the future roles right yeah yeah the others have not made that shift and that is where mm-hmm. i see the role of hr you know uh, people who have to coach them uh, without putting them under a spanner a, a scanner or a you know spot how do you mm-hmm. help them pivot make these changes so that's Got the it. second thing that i see that really at the leadership level some of them have made that change some of them recognize the new ways of working and don't really worry too much about the input side of the equation but more on the output side of the equation and some leaders are struggling and they're stuck in the yeah. process side i find these yeah. two are the more prominent ones at the workplace yeah it's so so interesting the the uh, just because of the show that i'm doing and i think we're on the fifth or sixth episode of this thing um this of of uh, the workforce and employees being more vocal and clear about what they want is surakshit a common theme that is coming out right because i yes. i i'm very interested in the subject as well as to what's happening in the pre versus post uh, <clears throat> covid world at the work workplace and common right. theme and often the first thing that people say right so it's so top of everybody's mind as an hr head or an hr professional um that this is the change that is seen and i, I agree with you i think uh, it, it's a it's a good one right yes. it, it's it's better to know what's on somebody's head than yes. in somebody's head than not know what is on somebody's head right or what yes. is what's on somebody's mind um yeah you were saying i was saying that and and it can so this is not just qualitative in nature you can see this yeah. in data right that's yeah. the other piece that i wanted to touch upon with you so yeah. is that yeah a uh, lot of people feel hr is you know uh, more person oriented interpersonal communication managing employees expectations mm. and so on and so forth but it's as much about data um yeah. a fun fact you know uh, and 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 i would invite uh, people in my profession to go back and see that data right before covid if you were to do 10 exit mm. interviews right mm. and you would uh, want to find out there would be very very common you know usual suspect kind of uh, reasons okay growth yeah. compensation you know location change and a big bucket of personal reasons Right. yeah you were never able to distinguish what that personal reason was all about right? yeah 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 it always used to be a conundrum to me okay saying that yeah okay, of course personal reasons hote hain but what are those personal reasons now if you do those 10 exit interviews you can pin down exactly what is the personal issue that wow that's the yeah. difference is there in the data that's what i mean by employees being vocal they don't shy away from saying that look i don't like the way uh, you know your line manager runs that's my personal reason it's not mm. that you know my family needs me or some help i can handle the health issues in my family fairly well but mm. it's the you know the stress that i feel at workplace that i can't handle that's my personal issue so that mm. that vocal and that's what is there in the data for everyone to see mm that's so interesting right so you really made it at a at a granular level but yeah i i think that that's a um, a clear change that hr leaders are talking about and and the and the quicker Uh, and i think we need to celebrate that if you ask me right we need to celebrate the fact that people are more aware i guess right of what they want and more confident of communicating um, their needs in some way i love i love the second point as well right i think the the new complexity that has come in business and uh, i'd also as a, as a follow up question like your view on um, you know work the work from home phenomena uh, but um, yeah but i think complexity increased then not many business leaders are still operating in in a in a pre covid world because maybe they've spent most of their career uh, in that that phase right so while mm-hmm. dealing with with younger professionals today they are still doing it in that way versus versus what they are i think that's very very interesting what's your yeah. take on work from home right and i don't mean from what your company's policy necessarily is towards it i just want to know your general take on it because i have a slightly contrarian um, view on work from home which i even i will share with you after you're done sure sure i think see my view is uh, also uh, i would be very very honest here by saying that it's a phenomena which even now we are still trying to figure out right i, mm. I don't think we've all made a clear uh, perception about it you know it's not as black and white as whether you like it or whether you don't 
yeah, because yeah. there are so many shades to it there are so many mm-hmm. situations in which it does make sense yes this is how you mm-hmm. should do it because the alternative is not that good so it's the alternative mm-hmm. is suboptimal right you would lose somebody mm-hmm. or the person would not mm-hmm. be able to contribute so therefore work from yeah. home makes a lot of yeah. sense but there yeah, are situations yeah. where this work from home is a roadblock also uh yeah. i think somewhere it's all about intent that's the mm-hmm. way i want to diagnose this that it's the intent on the part of the organization and the intent on the part of the employee which will determine whether this is actually something that gives a boost to productivity or does not mm-hmm. because yeah. we know there are hundreds and hundreds of cases of moonlighting of employee you know switching off yes. cameras yeah. those are true yeah. Yeah. those are not yeah. made up be in hr yeah. we do yeah. those are not made up at all yeah. there are also yeah. enough number of cases where line managers and employ uh, organizations have denied work from home in genuine cases yeah therefore putting the employee in a corner and making an op, you know a suboptimal mm-hmm. job mm-hmm. so i believe it's the intent where uh, things will either succeed or fail and yeah. that is where we have to just have i would say some guiding principles i don't mm-hmm. want to hard code it saying that okay yeah. three days from there or two days from there yeah. or in such circumstances alone because see let's be honest nobody has the you know uh the see all and know all situation where you can actually yeah. it. so you yeah. have to be a little flexible and those where the guiding principles should be in place uh, yeah. and not rules or regulations and then you have to leave it to the leaders and their intent and the employees and their intent to make it work best i would want to see it or more and more organizations adopting this approach rather than one or the other yeah true but I, i think the 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 jury is still out on on whether it works it doesn't work i also believe every organization is very different yes. uh, from the other right uh, your industry is different your growth path at that point is different your uh, you know the size is different so on and so forth right so you can't have one uh, policy pasted mm-hmm. across all of these different type of companies but if i had to take a surakshit and, and chime in on 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 my view if you think there's something wrong i personally believe that for a young professional um working from home is is a huge mistake right uh, because all the things that you spoke about earlier which is uh, you know management by walking around in some way um uh, you learn so much whether you realize it or not through observation yes and through feedback that you get right and that only happens when you're in a way at the workplace in some way because you're actively gaining the tacit knowledge or the tribe knowledge that is there within a, a certain unit or department and you're gaining that so for anybody just about starting off i think work from home irrespective of the role to yes. be told um i think it's a bad idea for them right because whether you like it or not if you are you know um, away right uh, and working remotely uh, it just becomes such a barrier to include you in those conversations that happen very quickly on yeah. the office floor in some way right so so young professionals that is you know at least the first 5 to 8 years of your life i don't think it's a good idea uh, of your career uh, yes. i don't think that it's a good idea at all then i guess as you progress through your career once you've built a certain amount of expertise in a certain thing i think also life takes over in so many different ways right you right. probably get married start having kids a lot of things happen and then you also make your career choices right you say hey am i the kind of person who wants to skyrocket my career and move very very quickly or am i just comfortable doing this but doing this very well right uh, and then you can make different choices as you know the the person and i'm not even bringing the organizational view here right it's just yeah, from a yeah. personal growth point of view um for especially like younger professionals i think it's a, it's a huge mistake uh, if you ask me i i don't know what your view yeah. is uh, a very simple take on that uh, so yeah. so first of all i think uh, it's it's very uh, difficult to generalize right uh, true, yes true. the young professionals would also find themselves in different situations different yes, uh, yes. Uh, challenges yes. um, but i i i would be okay with let's say if i was a, you know somebody starting my career at this yeah. stage or maybe a yeah. couple of years ago right yeah i would want to if and if the flexibility is there i would want to avail of work from home 
as long as i'm clear with what i'm going to do with that flexibility right yeah because you rightly said that for young uh, professionals it's important to observe see and then form their perceptions about how to go about doing things the right mm. way mm. but you all today's workplace is also quite chaotic right mm. uh, things change rapidly sometimes you can be a bit disoriented that's yeah. the time you want to take a step back right mm. but use that time to make sense of what you have seen put that yeah. information to good use and then come back yeah. with the next stage of your observation the next stage of your growth yeah. so yeah. i would urge if you were to do it right uh, mm. the first and the most obvious thing is to be there to be to to come up for work right and if you do that and yeah. if you also want to take work from home or whatever break away from you know your workplace but that's that should be for the right purpose because then that's it's yeah. like a, it's a contact sport business is a contact sport so after a yeah. good degree of exercise intense work you may want to take some time to recollect your thoughts you know center yourself again and then be ready for the next yeah. phase so that's the in from my side best ways to use this uh, because otherwise mm. I, young people also get uh, burnt out very very fast i know of people who have resigned for this reason i was telling you earlier i know of people yeah. who resigned specifically for the thing that hey, yeah that's the face i can't work with yeah 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 no see, i think both of us share more or less the same uh, point of view on that and i i think generalizing it like i mentioned right at the start is not possible right yes. because every company is different and at a different stage tell me what if you have a new hr professional somebody just entering the hr field um just joined a company first job Uh, as an hr executive what would your two or three pieces of advice be uh, on how to excel as an hr professional besides the stuff that you mentioned already like specific to hr what would you say to a young professional entering right so um in the last 2 to 3 years that has become um, a bit of a regular thing for me also sapnik because um, mm. i mean one of course leading a team you see people joining you see people mm. you know moving on to other roles uh mm. that's from the professional side but i also um do my bit to you know sort of uh, put a few things across to young leaders so i'm part of a couple of uh, 40 mm. under 40 30 under 30 those kind mm. of things which are now very mm. very common you know they weren't but then mm. yes i had i i take the opportunity to share experiences share certain insights so this has become more of a regular feature now um the first thing i believe in this is that uh, prepare yourself uh, mentally at least for mm. the long haul right uh, mm. don't don't get into a situation where people will find okay i have a certain degree of tolerance and i would mm. just go with that and then mm. anything more or less i would probably change tracks it's easy mm. to do that and you know at times it's needed to change tracks mm. but anything and it's it's you know examples from all walks of life undercooked food is always going to give you some ache right mm. so if you if you leave things undercooked if you do not give it the time the effort the focus uh, your effort is going to get wasted mm-hmm. so i was telling this interesting anecdote to somebody in my team uh, you know who joined this his first year uh, and this person deals in shares is very good in the market right it made good money and this that's what young people do i never knew about this when i was joining my starting my career so mm-hmm. i told him why do you hold a particular share for longer than the others mm-hmm. right and, and there is some something that you feel will appreciate in value because mm-hmm. you had it mm-hmm. you bought it from the previous person at a certain rate and then mm-hmm. when you're going to sell it you want to hold it for a while the next person who buys it from you would realize that you've held it that means some value has appreciated and therefore the person wants to give more uh, money for that for that one single piece the piece of paper hasn't changed right? yeah it's the value appreciation that has happened because of the passage of time and the yeah. effort that would have gone into to progress yeah right? think of it in the reverse right you are mm. also investing time effort energy into a job into a role into a workplace mm. the organization is going to put effort into you after a period of time when they see as mm. you are the person with potential now mm. unless you hold it for the right period of time this equation stays for a right period of time the value would be either you are underselling it or you will not probably be able to get the best value out of it mm. so mm. i try and give examples from you know things which are more easy to understand from from you know our own life and that's what don't so so your it. your first first kind of piece of advice would be think long term don't yes. don't think short term when it comes that's to your one. career yeah that's one 
second i think it's very important from a person who's joining in early to have a few people in their span or their you know network who you can talk to freely right who you should mm. be able to go and talk about it need not be in your workplace it could be outside as well but these are the people who can help you simplify things and make things look easier when they are not right i'll very, very interesting interesting example mm. of my own right uh, um in in my factory stint i had a commercial manager uh, who who was there and that was a person who had grown up the ranks and so on so what very mm. simple way of thinking and very effective way of thinking mm. now i met this gentleman recently after 14 years right mm. uh, in 2009 now 2023 and i told this individual not taking names that uh, hey mm. i i feel i have not invested correctly in my portfolio something or the other i need mm. to change and this person took a piece of a napkin a paper napkin and then wrote down okay what is it that you need in 5 minutes flat i realized i was overthinking mm. now and i was overthinking on this for a week more than that mm. right? and this mm. is how the other person simplified for me so mm. always have a few people you know two three people who, who you can be yourself with whom you can share your problems issues you know difficulties and then leave it to them to center you to guide you and do that in return mm. right if yeah you can, if yeah you can. so that's the second piece because a lot of people young people always feel a little intimidated or little hesitant when they have more senior folks around right they yeah. that they will not understand the issues right but these people have gone through the same issues as mm. yourself when when they were yeah. you know in yeah. your shoes so have a few people whom you can talk to whom you can rely mm. on cultivate those uh, the networks that's the way i would mm. uh, talk about the second part of my uh, info mm. too and then don't forget to have fun because life will throw a lot of issues at you bahut mm. sari cheeze aisi honge jo aap bilkul anticipate nahi karoge and then mm. uh, you know that's where you will realize okay it's not necessary that you are serious and you are you know too much uh, caught up with everything that didn't happen or you couldn't do don't don't mm. uh, put, bog yourself down so these two mm. three things will be helpful in making sense of what's going on but then mm. everybody has to put in the effort that they need to put in yeah so i i think some things that you said are excellent not just for ah. hr professionals but just you know professionals at large um i really like what you said about the talk to people freely right and the reason why i liked it is a lot of times we use this word mentoring yeah you need to find a mentor and for a young person often that becomes like a project in itself ki yaar mera mentor kaun hai who is my mentor i need to find a mentor and yeah. i think a good lens to wear for that surakshit is the lens that you put on it as to say and just find people that you can talk to freely right. right um and the minute you find those two or three people to talk to freely um whether you call them your mentor or not you will get mentor like input from them without the pressure of actually finding a mentor right yeah yeah, um, yeah. which very often is put so i i love that point you know i'm going to share it let share me, it far and wide Yeah. funny uh, incident on yeah. this one uh, yeah. uh, sapil because we've been yeah. talking quite seriously for a while mere mm-hmm. nature ko suit nahi karta to be very mm-hmm. honest so in nestle uh, i was yeah. given the opportunity to uh, implement the mentorship program in yeah. nestle right for the first yeah. time in nestle south asia now nestle is a global organization a lot of these yeah. initiatives get designed in the center of excellence in our yeah. head office in vive yeah so when this mentorship program came to me right uh, in the form of a document i was very surprised when i read things like mentor mentee contract there was actually mm. <laughs> it was actually a contract and uh, it was not just yeah you know, uh, figurative yeah, it yeah, was actually yeah. a contract it was a format yeah. in yeah. which they would sign up for the frequency of interactions they would sign yeah. up they would go to the to the extent of prescribing the uh, yeah. environment in which you will connect right yeah. it should yeah. be this it should be that over a cup of coffee this that so yeah. they were it was very prescriptive yeah. very quickly i realized that in the indian context it won't work yeah. so therefore yeah. with with alignment from my seniors we actually had to adopt it to the indian context right yeah. and that's so interesting so yeah. so i i i first thing don't put labels who's a mentor mm. who's not because it puts a little bit of pressure on the mentor also right yeah yeah ki mujhe kuch smart bolna hai kuch smart bolna hai i've been thrust into this position of responsibility now i have to make sure whatever i say if this guy implements it kuch galat ho jayega to yeah the conversation free flowing don't let yeah. don't, there's no need for a mentor to think he's you know yeah. an elevated entity here or a mentee to yeah. think they have gone for something else it yeah. is just the time that you can give to an individual 
let them yeah. think and a lot of times the answers come from those people themselves yeah. so yeah just just be available for people in a genuine sense that's the way Got Yeah, very interesting very very nicely put what surakshita the skills of today that people need to be equipped with to have successful careers if you had to identify any two or three core skills that you're observing across the board i'm not talking about your the hr department in particular but if you sure, had to just look sure. at like skills across that cut across what would those skills be see of course if we are talking about you know in general workplace yeah. today right so then the skills have to be more from the personal standpoint or behavioral standpoint mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. i think the first and the foremost is the sense of balance right uh, sense of balance in the sense that okay you are expected to do a few things right you are expected to give an output but at the same mm-hmm. time you also need input from others so mm-hmm. the understanding the ability to connect with other people that's i think a core mm-hmm. skill if you are mm. uh, if you're not able to balance your perception about others and others perception about you then mm. it doesn't matter how functionally sound you are how qualified capable you know uh, experienced you are it is likely mm. that your your output could be better and that's where mm. you will stumble so i think the first and the foremost skill i would say is the ability to connect with people the ability mm. to see things in a more broader sense and not mm. uh, get mistaken for saying that okay this is what i will do and this is what i'm mm. going to do mm-hmm. end of story then you know, yeah. i'm not bothered with that so that is one yeah. second thing second skill i believe is um, a lot of these things are needed but you need data for mm. your decision making you need the understanding of business mm. try to give due due uh, importance to all of these things i've seen mm. a lot of people continuously working on their strengths and making that mm. as a core area and really mm. be wanting in other areas mm. right i've seen a lot of leaders who reach a certain stage and cannot grow beyond that mm. and see the conversation about an individual will happen when they're not in the room right so they're mm. not there to say their side of the story most mm. of the time that's how organization Correct. processes are defined if you are doing performance Correct. calibration if you are doing talent assessment most often than not that individual mm. will not be there to represent their story which Correct. means what others think of them what is there on mm. paper that's what becomes you know what that individual can or cannot do which yeah. means people when they observe you at work and they just see you limited in your output or limited in your potential or limited in your leadership capability that's when you will start seeing opportunities dry up a lot yeah. of people are unable to diagnose this that why did their growth stop at a certain stage right mm. it's not the lack of opportunity i always believe there's headroom to grow no matter what but it is the mm. essential ingredients missing which the individual could not really utilize mm. so i believe yeah. the sense of balance the ability to connect with people and have that mm. understanding of what you can or cannot do that's very very important yeah. that's that's one piece the second i think uh, important piece would be um to have that ability to go beyond what is your call of duty i know it's very cliche mm. to say uh, you know stretch mm. beyond duty and etc and so on so forth mm. there will always mm. be a shortage there will always be you know uh, a shortage of x or y or z and if you are a person who can actually put up your hand and do that right mm. then you are the one only you have gained from it because of the experience mm. because of the fact that now people know you can do more of this and that's where doors open so my suggestion mm. to a lot of people would be that please if there's something that is not prescribed in your role it's not part of your job description do that yeah. more rather than just your yeah. job description so do that yeah this is what i would yeah. think of yeah absolutely I, i very interesting um i think yeah irrespective of of kind of which uh, department you belong to you are always going to deal with people right yes. all business is about people right your customer is a person your boss is a person your team member is a person your uh, partners are every everybody is a person in the end yes. right so if, if you're not very good at dealing with people and working with people um, i think you're limiting yourself uh, and that is a skill i i like that you brought it in the category of a skill yes. because that's what many people don't realize and that skill of course comes more naturally to a few people and not so naturally to others but it needs to be thought of as a skill and bu- built accordingly yes it is um, conscious effort. i think it yeah definitely needs conscious effort it's not something that yeah. anybody else should inculcate in you there's no training program to teach you people skills sorry yeah 
are you yeah. are learning in development yeah. uh, i will go out on a limb and say no training program can teach you people yeah. in this space it's it's what you yeah. what you sign up for and what you want to correct do. correct just uh, i i know which lens you're wearing when when you say that right but uh, just quite honestly having been a teacher myself of a lot of these subjects uh, um a lot of these training programs are often starting points of that journey points. right yes. i think yes. they just kind of raise your awareness to a lot of the topics uh, and then of course like you said right you have to self learn them after yes. that through observation through practice through introspection right yes. but very often i've seen on just about any topic uh, the, you know the training program becomes your starting points of raised awareness yes. uh, and help there which is very very critical to people right yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, and and you know often offline i will i when we meet i'll share so many instances of how you know things that were brought to my awareness that i didn't know which were very very small things you know started helping so much yeah. um in, in me doing stuff or or being better as far as people management or my interpersonal skills are are concerned Absolutely. right um i also thought that your point of going beyond duty is very very important right like they say dress dress for the part that you want not the part that you're in exactly right. like that right uh, you know do more than what your job currently demands and soon that new thing also will be part of your job and in turn help you help you make progress right so i think there are fantastic points so rakshit we have run out of time unfortunately um we've had a lovely one hour conversation and i haven't even realized that it's been an yes. hour you're you're such a engaging speaker and um, so articulate in terms of putting your thoughts across and i really enjoyed my conversation with you right yes. any last bits that you'd want to share something that you think i haven't asked but is important that you'd just like to touch upon as we as we get done with this interaction yeah i i have one thought in my mind and i think this yeah. is uh, true again i i i don't realize when i stopped talking about hr to be honest so yeah, i think yeah. I talk a little bit more about you know how people perceive life and go through it so yeah yeah just one thing on the same lines right uh, and this is you talked about training program so i do this yeah. quick in, and i've been a trainer myself so uh, yeah. i do this quick training kind of same training program so when i ask people that okay what were your sales targets this month mm. answer, most of them do that i ask them what was your sales mm. target or achievement last month Mm. the number drops a little bit then i go mm. a month back the number drops you know fairly low beyond that i can tell you for a fact that they have to open a laptop or go over through their emails mm. right mm. what does mm. that tell you these things mm. transition very fast your mm. targets your achievements your outcomes now i ask another question that think through in your career no matter how long it was um who were the people who helped you grow or who were the people whom you grew in your career mm. and mm. each one of them can count the names in the in, on the tips of the mm. table why mm. is that mm. if, if anybody gives a thought why is that because mm. the impact people have on each other you were talking about online communication versus offline communication right yeah in the yeah. offline communication when you are in each other's personal space that yeah. impact is you know a whole body experience yep 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 visual non visual verbal non verbal all of those things so i just would want to leave everybody with this thought that do not underestimate the impact that you have on people and the people have on you mm. that is human capital you know mm. your targets your achievements your grades your designations your titles mm. will then drop at some point in time mm. but this capital won't diminish if you mm. want to nurture it that's the way i would mm. put it amazing i think that's a lovely uh, ending thought don't underestimate the impact you have on people and that people have on you so rakshit it's been an absolute pleasure talking and interacting with you um and i hope this is the first but first of many many interactions that we both have online and hopefully in person as we've been talk about i look forward to it so thank you so much <laughs>